Are you um and it's on and popping. We live. Here we come. <laughs> we live already. Hey, what's up? What's up? Welcome. Welcome to night 10, coach. This is night 10. Oh, wow. Ain't that crazy? Um, night 10 of our, our 12 night stream of uh, Chief Pigskin Salute to Black History Month. Um, we're here to recognize, socialize, and energize. Um, we've had a great couple of uh, weeks, and, and this week is 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 great as well and, and maybe even better coach I, I don't mean any disrespect to any other coaches or anybody that we've have have had on but this week has been awesome so far and I, man I am so excited about the guests we have tonight we ain't gonna talk about it quite yet quite yet I, I, I'm gonna hold on a little bit and, and, and leave that as a teaser um, thank you to our sponsor our sponsor for this whole month has been the QB school the QB school is the home of the best football analysis on YouTube 8 million viewers and over a hundred thousand subscribers have watched the J T. O. Sullivan, former eight-year NFL QB with a PhD breakdown football. In addition, the new QB school course entitled Master Pass Protection QB Lens is available right now. There's also a free pass pro quiz that could help check your knowledge and it'll rank you. Um, that's at theqbschool.com. Also check out what we're doing on Chief Pigskin. If you're interested in the clinic, which again, there's a lot, a lot of fire information there. Guys are just dropping jewels um, and, and, and the price that you're paying is, is very, very minimum for, for what you're getting. Um, and that's uh, clinic.chiefpigskin.com. And then when that stuff goes off the clinic, it moves over to the store. That's store.chiefpigskin.com. Lots and lots of content on the store from, I mean, heck, Nate's been doing this thing seems like 50 years now <laughs> and he's been just kind of logging logging catalogs and, and and so he's got lots of content check it out guys when you get a chance um didn't introduce myself if you don't know yet i'm tim turner head football coach of the champagne well, central football it. yes sir yes sir along with my my co-host but he's really the host this dude <laughs> take, it, it, this dude is the cornerstone of the show i'm telling you guys uh charles watkins is the defensive coordinator over at concordia in chicago coach how you doing today sir I'm doing good coach that's also i want to apologize for not having a show on monday everyone sure yeah we we're moving it back to a friday so stay tuned to that usually we stop on thursday but i want everybody to know if you got some time on friday before you take your lady out um listen to us for, for about 30 minutes so it's right let, let, or or maybe maybe if, if she don't mind you know you, you can have dinner and have us on a little bit just in the background so i mean we can be background noise i'm cool with that <laughs> hey uh folks we have a outstanding guest with us tonight and i don't want to make him wait too long guys I, I i'm ready to start this conversation right off coach um Shout out to you guys on the chat line. We got David Thompson over there from Oregon. Appreciate you, coach. Um, we got Steve Walsh. Steve Walsh is from uh, Westchester, Ruston, PA. PA. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. yeah, PA. Outside of that's, Philly. Yes, sir. That's a, that's a new guy. I appreciate you, coach. Um, Nate Allball, of course. Jason Eddings is with us. Appreciate you, coach. Um, tonight's guest is is awesome <laughs> tonight's guest is not only the off the outside linebackers coach at umass but and, and that's what he's doing now but what really excites me is this dude is is a is a super bowl champion and a pro bowler um tonight's guest is uh kato june who's going who's going to join us here shortly coach how, how you feel about tonight's guest man man i'm super super excited uh just uh you know just learn from him and his experience and to learn about his transition from being a player to a coach um, was a lot different than mine. You know, I had I, I didn't play at that level. I didn't know what it was like. And then just to hear his whole story. So I'm definitely, definitely excited. There he is. There he is. <laughs> coach June, how you doing, sir? Hey, how you guys doing, man? Coach and coach. Man, fantastic. <laughs> hey, I, I'm Coach Tim Turner. I'm the head football coach down in Champaign Central High School. Um, I don't know if you know or not, but my, my co-host is Charles Watkins. He's the defensive coordinator over at Concordia in Chicago. I believe you guys know each other a little bit. Absolutely. Um, man, Coach, I am so excited to have you on here tonight. Um, we, we've had some awesome coaches come by and talk some ball, and I'm hoping you to do, do that as well. But, man, we've not had a Super Bowl champion here. <laughs> we have not had that. So, so I, I, I led with that. Tell us a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Oh man, well I guess I'm I guess I'm an old man now, right? You know, been out <laughs> been out of playing for for some time, but I've been married for 13 years, uh, about 13 years. I should say it'll be it'll be 13 years. Uh, 12 year old son uh, from Washington D.C. Uh, 
you know, went to Anacostia High School. Hold up, we gotta shout out my 18. <laughs> you know, East of the River, you know, that you know, put on for DC always. Um, right, right. Okay, okay. Left there that, had the opportunity. Hold on, Go hold ahead. on, coach. I, I hate to cut you off, but I want you to know. That's what we're here for. That's what we're doing. We're just hanging out, right? So if you want to shout out your, your high school, if you want to shout out your high school coach, if you want to shout out, um, I, I would say your baby mama, but I ain't, I ain't, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. These just jokes. I, I don't believe you. Just, I, these just jokes. I only got I only got to the married part. I ain't even get the chance to tell you. One for one, baby. That one right, for one. My man. She my 100%. Man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but absolutely, man. I, and and I, and I think about like going back when you talk about when people say, you know, what's your story? And, and I'm somewhat of a nomad in the sense that uh, where I was born, I was born in California, went to Oklahoma, we went to D.C. Like, so I've been a lot of places, been a chance to interact with a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds, which to me is awesome. And uh kind of makes I guess it forces you to be a people person when you kind of moved around a little bit um so I look at like but I look at everybody looks at their high school years and some of those those defining years those golden years that kind of help push you you know where you want to go and 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 at least starts that journey uh, so I'm, I'm always partial to my Anacostia high school days coach Willie Stewart the legend uh <laughs> helped shape me from a coach um and and, a, and as a person I think that's like the, the biggest thing when you look back at in those times. I had the opportunity to go play at the University of Michigan. Um, awesome experience. Uh, was around a, a ton of, I, you know, I could, the list goes on and on, you know what I mean? In terms of the the, the players that I had the opportunity to play with, the coaches uh, that I had the opportunity uh, to be coached by. Um, and that experience just being at the University of Michigan um, kind of shapes you and anybody that's a Michigan man will will let you know uh, how they stand on what they believe and, and what helped make them uh, who they are in terms of those belief systems uh, and those uh, practices in terms that we learned uh, in those days. For you. Sure. Had a had a great journey there, man. Went to uh, you know, Indianapolis Coast, was drafted in the sixth round uh, uh, as an undersized linebacker, you know, and I, and I, I look at my journey and it's funny because uh, I joke with one of my cousins and say, hey man, you know, you know, I had the worst number transformation of all time. You know, I went from wearing number one in high school, single digit guy, right? Got to college, had the unfortunate, fortunate uh, opportunity to wear number two after the greatest college football player, uh, arguably oh. one of the greatest college football players of all time now, and pros. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Coach, I'm, I'm big blue. So, oh. you, it, it, and, and, I, and I'm running the show tonight, so you can say the greatest player, right? Hey, you can say whatever you want. To. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Name me another defensive Heisman, and then we can have a conversation. You know? <laughs> right. So, I had the opportunity to wear number two there. And then I get to the league, and, you know, I'm wearing 59. So, it's like uh, <laughs> the worst transformation of numbers. But with that transformation, it became new positions. I was a corner, you know, running back in high school, played safety in college, played linebacker in the league. So it's like just being able to have, uh, uh, you know, it kind of goes into my nomad journey uh, of who I am and, and what I've experienced thus far. That's crazy. So, so coach, all right, you, you come out of college, you're a safety. And, and, and they say, you, you're going to pros. And I, I know you're getting paid now. And so it's, things are a little bit different, but they say, you're going to be a linebacker now. What was the first thing you was thinking? What what went through? What goes through your mind? Well, I weighed in at the combine at 218, right? So I was already, a, you know, with, you know, big safety. That was our little mantra. We the big safeties and kind of stuck with us as I, you know, got into coaching in terms of being, trying to create some little big safeties, right? So, uh, <laughs> but, you know, the first thing I thought about, I'm telling you, the first thing, and this may be the DB in me, right? This might be the DB in me. The first thing I thought about was, well, shoot, I can't wear 20 nothing. <laughs> <laughs> when the deep, uh, when the football ops guy, you know, once they, you know, do the thing, all right, we're gonna take you to the next pick, blah blah blah. No, the first thing they asked me uh, was, how would you feel? This this is this is the the the, the trick of the NFL, right? Hey, how would you feel playing, you know, linebacker in some nickel situations, right? So I'm like, nickel linebacker, I played that in college a little bit, you know, whatever. Like, you know, I get there and I'm in the A gap to B gap. But, you know, so it's like it's a totally different world than coming down in the box as a safety. You know, you're outside curl flat play. You might be a dropper. You might do whatever, but you're doing it from outside in. Doing B to B is a totally different deal, right? Uh, on top of that, it's like, oh, I get the B to B and I got to wear 50 number. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that that part of it, that is literally like the 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 first thing that I thought about was like, oh. I'm, I'm playing linebacker, linebacker, you know, so get ready for another change and another, you know, part of my journey. 
Sure, sure, sure. And, and, and along with that, Coach, because I, I, I looked you up, um, tell us how did you go from, you know, your playing days to then becoming a, a high school head coach, correct? Absolutely. Uh, the, and I look, think about this, and, and, and it's something that's been started to be talked about as former players, as guys um, that leave the game without direction, so to speak, because you poured so much of your life into reaching your ultimate goal, which your ultimate goal is not going to last very long. If you play 10 years, which is a lifetime for some people, except for Tom Brady, right? right. If you play 10 <laughs> years, <laughs> you, you know, you, you've played a long time, but you're still a young man, right? So you put everything in your entire life into this bowl for, for a few years of opportunity. And then the transition period, right? It's, it's almost like the ugly breakup because most people don't get a parade and a championship and a way of going to Disney World on the way out. It just, the light just turns off, right? And that's a nightmare for a lot of guys. So for myself, seeing that, uh, you know, guys go through that journey and literally you would see guys just disappear. Like, you know, your your buddies, like your main guys, like they would, they would you, you couldn't get a hold of them. You couldn't see them, you would you're like, man, it's crazy. Uh, but understanding that, that people are really going into this depressive state where they don't know how to deal with, they don't know how to turn to, because all you've all you've done as a player is show how strong you were, right? How powerful you are, all these things that you can overcome. And now when that light turns off and you need someone to help, like you don't know how to reach out back to somebody like, hey, I need help. I'm not able to do this by myself. Uh, so I, you know, seeing that happening i always wanted to help kids right that was like a big a big thing for me to give back to the kids and, and i did that when i had my foundation while i was playing uh and and shortly thereafter after till i started coaching but like i just you know you, you just see a, a a need for people like yourself to come back to the area where you know <laughs> if you if you anybody been in Southeast DC or any other inner city across the country, it doesn't matter where it is. People that have less than, uh, you know, there's a need for people that kind of look like you in a success success story. So that's kind of what kind of brought me back because I didn't, I, I did have this. I said I will not. First of all, I hate going to regular gyms, right? You know, if when you've been going up an athlete, <laughs> you know, you got, you know, you just used to just being you guys and there are no distractions. You get your work and you go home. Right. So being in the gym saying, yeah, I'm just waiting on that call. Like I hated that dude. Like, oh, I'm like, oh, I'm not doing that. I am. I refuse to be that guy that's in the gym waiting on a call. I said, look, I got to, you know, go on with my life. Because the thing for me was like, hey, when you look at it as a player, I play eight years in the league. Right. So I got the opportunity to play eight, you know, professional seasons. I'm eight years behind the people that I graduated college with. They might be on They're eight years ahead of me. So now I'm trying to reset and say, hey, how can I try to catch back up? Because this career is over. It's nothing that you can do about it. Hey, where, how do you reset, right? How do you, you know, the longer you wait, the longer you wait for that call, that's the years going by of you progressing into the next thing that you're very passionate about. Uh, and I think that was for me was the biggest thing. Hey, I didn't get that call that last summer. Bam, I went straight. I told my, I told my guys, hey, I'll come back over there to to help you guys out. Um, if I don't get the, if I don't get in the camp, it's a done deal. Didn't get in the camp, came over there. I end up being that, you know, the AD <laughs> and the head football coach. So I jumped right into, you know, so so the heavy lifting of of, of wow. high school education uh, for the education period. You know, that part of it uh, was kind of how that journey happened. I just made the decision to say, hey, if I don't do this, if this doesn't happen, I'll be there. And then, like I said. Um, that's kind of the way, you know, God led me into that, into that path and kind of grateful for it. Wow. That's awesome. So, so from, from high school, where, where was your next step? Where did you, were you just at Antioch for high school or did you move on to some other place? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We, coach, coach, I got to correct you a little bit. It's Anacostia now. You, Anacostia. You, I, coach, hold on. Listen, he, oh, so, so I, I, I can't, no, no, I can't let on. you butcher, I can't and, let you and, butcher our name like that, man. And you, and you should not. But I need you to understand, it is no disrespect. I butcher a lot of names. I have butchered Coach Watkins' name several times. So, so it, there's no disrespect intended. Say, say it one more time, I'm going to say it right. Anacostia. 
Anacostia. Yeah. Right, right. Or you could just so, say so, Anna. You know, it's, you know, the people around the way we call her Anna. So it's like so, so Anna it is because I can't yep, chop that is. up too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 from Anna, where where you? What was your next step? You know what? At, to, at the time, um, I really had no interest on pursuing college or professional coaching in the sense that I felt like my greater impact was on the high school level. I'm hands on with these guys every day and taking them and but you know what you realize real fast is that one, you know, because during this breakup, I alluded to that to this transformation to when you leave football and that just light just cuts off, right? In that darkness, you 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 become, you know, you're in a depressive state and you you almost want to hate you want to hate ball because you can't have it no more. It's gone. Right. So now you have this love hate relationship going on and I don't want to watch it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing, I'm not going to play no video. I'm not going to do nothing to consider football, which is bananas, right? It's, it's the absolute most ridiculous thing. It's almost like, you know, you're going through a bad relationship and you're mad at the, you know, any and other the opposite, opposite sex because of your previous, <laughs> you know, the previous cast music. So child, you know, y'all young boys, y'all know, look that up, man. No, 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 I, I know, I know, no, 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 no. Cause hold on. You don't see all this gray over here, brother. No, I'm talking uh, about the, maybe some the young young son young oh, guys okay. watching like hey they don't know <laughs> yeah. about that they don't really make good r b no more so i'm, I'm gonna leave that no, alone but look hold on i got I just throw this story in coach the first <laughs> night i was on here i was on we was on with coach Watkins and, and, a, and a young coach and i asked who was the top r b and these dudes said uh chris brown chris brown I, uh, yeah, yeah you'll get said, a, you'll get in a fight with these young guys over that chris brown now i'm like coach i couldn't believe it Coach, I said, I said, I, my, I said are you my, serious? <laughs> right. My question to them was Michael Jackson or Prince? And I, I'm pretty sure it was Coach Watkins said. Chris Brown. Chris Brown. <laughs> uh, what? I might fight you, Coach. <laughs> and it's unbelievable. And we'll and will and will fight you to the core. And and I get it. They have a different barometer of how they judge things. Things are judged as streams as opposed to albums. So it's a different sure. time. And you know, like I said, they have a different barometer, but when, when you when you talk about some things, uh, I don't care what it is. When you're trying to judge it in different time frames, there's some things that are timeless, and and only the test of time will be able to stand and say, "Hey, we told you this was better than this." So it's like, you're right. you know, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, it does have a lot of hits, but come on, man. <laughs> but that's also like like Chris Brown. I would say, you know, I think I think you were before your time, uh, Coach Coach June. You know that that underside uh, bigger safety. Now you see a lot of teams are recruiting guys. You look at Arizona, the Cardinals, a lot of their backers are kind of your side, and they look for that speed. So um, that's kind of like you know you you play that generation. You would have did really well in this generation as well too. Um, but I wanted to you know <laughs> look. I, I was born too early. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so from I guess so. And you see this more and more now. Tell us how was that transition from that high school coach to um, was it Howard? Is that where you got your first college start at? Yes. You know what? The, it, to me, it was seamless. One because I think anytime to me as a coach, I don't care what you're coaching, where you're coaching, what level you're coaching. Right? You're a teacher. All right. And and you're there to teach whatever technique teach a defense teach an offense like you're teaching this person how to execute a job right and the teaching doesn't necessarily change now the language that you have to use or can use definitely it's changed on the different levels because i learned real quickly coming straight out of pro ball playing and coaching high school kids kids most of them will never even play college football like most of them will never even have the opportunity right they're doing it because they just love to play football um, they don't understand football language is things that we deem, uh, you know, the gospel of football. Like if you, if you say an out route, you know, pretty much everybody in football know you're going to run an out route, whether it's five or 10 yards, you know, you're running out. Like, so little things that you, um, don't, that you take for granted that, that people know you have to change the way that you're teaching on top of that. I'm going back to Southeast DC. All right you have to be able to make things relatable to things that they know. 
And <laughs> so if they think Chris Brown is the baddest joke of all time, I'm going to use a Chris Brown reference to try to reach yeah. them as opposed to trying to get them to learn Michael. They just not going to feel it. So I, you, you learn that quickly, uh, just tr trying to reach those younger guys. And when you get to opportunity and understand that like every place has its it's things that that move them or that need they need that the, the type of fuel they need to move them, you know whereas what i needed to do and say and be uh at anacostia high school when i left there would change when i went down the street to flowers high school and i was a head coach there for a year before i went to howard like those they had different needs and leaving flowers going to howard that was a totally different need now because i don't have the same connection with these guys, I don't have the same time, I should say, that I get the chance to spend to these guys. I'm not sitting in my office and telling guys, go to class. Don't you go to class? Oh, I'm on lunch. It's your third lunch for the day. Like, like <laughs> those are the things that you you don't have those interactions as much on a college level. Well, the good thought of thing about Howard, though, is that we're on campus. We're we're in Howard. You know, I, I, I joke because my wife is a Howard grad. And my wife, my mother, my brother, her whole side of her family. So I'm like the out oddball. Like I'm an oddball uh, PWI, predominantly <laughs> white uh, institution that in my family, in my house. So, yeah. So, you know, I, I'm, oh, you didn't go to Howard, Michigan? I didn't, I'm looking like, this is Michigan. Like, what is wrong? Like, but you got to understand. And I didn't understand that dynamic until I was in it at Howard. And I'm like, oh, I get it now. I, I totally get it. And there is a different need for those kids in terms of what they need from me to help them reach their goals as I, you know, that I had at Flowers. And you just kind of have to, or Anacostia is like, well, you just have to learn what that is and try to figure out how to tap into that source so you can be the conduit to get them the information and them the, the knowledge to help them progress and move on in, in their life. And I think that's, that's the, the challenge you come when you go to different places. And, and, nice. and I'll, I'll get I'll get uh, killed if I don't make this connection. My girlfriend as well got her master's from Howard, so I got. <laughs> it's you, you know. All right. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, coach, we got the platform. You better use it however you can, my brother. So <laughs> I ain't mad at you. <laughs> no, I, I, absolutely, man. You know. Hey, so so, Coach June, here's a question I have for you. I, I've coached with a few guys that were. Um, college athletes, uh, elite level athletes. Um, in fact, and then you may be able to make this uh, connection. I started as a youth football coach. Uh, the first year I coached, my, I was a co assist. I was a co-head coach with Ty Dothard. Mm -hmm. you, did, does that name ring a bell to you? Ty Dothard yeah. was a uh -huh. was a uh, running back from the U of I. Played a couple of years in the league. Okay. Um, now this was not the case with Ty, but. Everybody makes some connections. I want to make some connections myself. <laughs> but uh, this was not the case with Ty. But did, did you find yourself having having a difficulty coaching those high school kids that weren't as talented? Um, I, I, again, I've coached with several guys that, that were really elite athletes. And, and a few of them had difficulty coaching um, the athletes that weren't as talented. because And not anything of their fault. They just were always used to being the best on the field, <laughs> and, and it was it was what it was. They they had a standard, and that was that what they thought. Um, to answer this question, uh, I would have to say that I did not have that issue, and I'm gonna tell you why. I when I came back to Anacostia, I was you know I, every accolade you can think of going up to that from a high school level going to college, doing what I did in college, having a pro career, like all these things come with you, right? So I'm coming back home uh, to, to be the head coach of a team that probably hasn't won uh, a game in like two years at this point. Like, so we're, we literally fell all the way off where we were in the championship every year to, and guys going to school, like I, I tell people all the time, like, shoot, I, you know, I was, you know, people like, oh yeah, it's cool, Willie Stu. I say, yeah, man, I'm, I was Stu's like 10th, 20th, or, 22nd pro like I wasn't you know he's had a lot of pros like I just was another one of guy that followed the blueprint you know what I mean so it's like uh shoot we had we had like 71s three guys in, on my team on my uh, high school team that my senior year uh were in pro camps or my rookie year or y'all in the pro camps again I'm like man that's amazing right and I'm just thinking back on that after the fact three guys off the southeast team the southeast dc team right you know what I mean so uh I think that that's a, 
a big deal. So when I came back, I never wanted it to be, because I just remember all the people uh, that helped us along that, that, that were there, guys like Coach Stu, uh, they wanted to be influential and they weren't doing it for them per se. They really wanted to pour in the kids and working there and teaching there, you realize how fast, like you really got to be here for the kids because if you're not, it's it, it's so much else, there's so much other things going against you and, and working around you. So for me, I never wanted it to be about me. So that was the hardest thing, removing myself right from this situation. Hey, I don't want it to be about me. Hey, coach, how did we come back? So how does it feel to win the Super Bowl? Yeah, that's cool. But like, you know, I, let's 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 pour something else into them, something more tangible that they can take with them outside of, you know, I, I got a chance to be coached by Cato June. Like to me, that that wasn't enough. Like I wanted them to go on and be successful young men, successful fathers and look back and say to that time that I was there, like, man, coach really helped me. I appreciate that. Now, I didn't get that that, you know, the message until later on in life, but I got it. I appreciate it. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it's about. Like it, it and it's hard to do that because people only associate with you what they know. Um, but I don't want them, the, the kids to feel like, Oh, it's just because of, you no, know, it's not about what I've done or what I know. It's about what, what can I actually get you to execute and how can I get you to do it? All right. And, and that at the end of the day is coaching to me. So it, it wasn't difficult to me because I, I wasn't wanting, I rem, like, if I, if you remove yourself from the coaching, it, it, it'll make you so much sleep so much better. Like I, if I had learned that, Hey, remove yourself from the coaching. Cause it's not about what you could do or how you would have done it. How can I get this guy to do it? Knowing that, okay, instead of saying, Oh, he can't do this. He can't do that. All right. These are his tools that he has. And then we're going to use these tools and help him uh, execute or reach whatever he's trying to do, because it's not about me. Well, when I was here, when I did that, remove yourself from coaching, remove yourself from coaching, and you'll be a better coach. And that, and that's why I didn't really struggle with that because I never wanted it to be about Cato June coming back. I wanted it to be about, hey, how can we get these guys? And we're having a blast. Do I had all my buddies that <laughs> I had a, a guy that I played with in Michigan. To uh, Bruce Perry was uh, my running back coach and played for Philadelphia. Derek Williams was one of my receiver coach. Played at Penn State. Played for in the league. And, and people look like, oh, you got an all-star cast. I'm like, no, I have the guys that uh, that are my friends that are close to me that I trust to be able to teach the same thing. It's not about us. We don't care. It's not like we just want to teach you young guys ball and try to get you to win some games. Go have a great college experience by being a collegiate athlete like we did. And and to me, okay. if you look at it like that, that that track kind of removes yourself, right? So you don't struggle with that because they don't. you're not trying to get them to do what you did or how you did it. That wow, Coach, you're you're dropping nuggets, and and I, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a repeat this one that I'm gonna steal from you. I, I, I'm repeating it. Listen, we got guys on the chat line. I don't know if you know that. Uh, we got guys that are on a live chat. Um, there's probably 15. Uh, it looks like about 30 guys over there chatting it up a little bit, having a little bit of fun. Um, here's the little nugget that I want to share again that I'm stealing from you. Coach just said, remove yourself from coaching, and you'll be a better coach. That, that is that is profound to think about. Um, I, I wish somebody would have said that to me as a young coach, right? Because you, you're right. That's something that you do have to learn. You have, you do have to grow into. Um, before we go on, Coach, uh, we got a couple more questions for you. Um, I want to check in on our chat line a little uh -oh. bit, see, see what we got going on over there. Um, we've got several guys on there. Uh, shout out to Ben Campos. Ben's always with us rocking. Uh, we got Coach Big we got Coach Big Pete, Deep Dish Football, um, been with us for, for the last few days. Um, we also got Todd McDonald checking in from Florida. Appreciate you, Todd. Um, we've got uh, Pops Allball, who is in Georgia, I, I believe. Yeah, Coach is out in Georgia. Appreciate you for joining us. Um, Steve Walsh, appreciate you. Not the Steve Walsh, I don't think. It might be the Steve Walsh. If it is, please put that in the chat line. Let's see. Um, <laughs> we, got, we got production. We got Nate Allball kicking it with us. Um, we got presentation. College football has joined us. Um, Co Coach Glasgow. Um, John Warren is in with us. Um, we've got a special guest, man. My brother, my big brother, James Turner. Tony Turner is in there. So I I I'm excited to have my brother over there kicking it with you guys. Um, before we go on, Coach, we got a game. Here here's how we do things, all right? Um, it's a trivia game. It is some black history of trivia. Black history trivia. See what you know a little bit. It's the three. It's three questions. 
best best three questions, all right, between you and Coach Watkins, and, and here's how we get down. There will be no ties. If it comes to a tie, it goes to rock, paper, scissors, all right? So, and, and, and here's what. Um, the loser has to give up the Super Bowl ring. <laughs> So, so coach, if you ain't ready to give up that ring, you better look, you better know some black history facts here, my man. One and zero against you, Matt. That's, that's well, yeah, crazy. He, he, let, he, let me let me get my let me get my uh, let me get my hey Google going. Hey Google, uh, <laughs> give me my cheat cheat sheet over here. <laughs> right, right. Uh, just a quick fact, I, I like to share a little bit before we move on. Um, I don't know if you guys knew the the, the founder of Chicago was a black man. Mm -hmm. It's John Baptiste uh, was not only the first settler, but also founder of Chicago, Illinois. His foresight in perceiving the importance of Chicago was matched by his uncommon affinity with the local Native American tribes. Um, so this dude was, was one of the first people to recognize um, the importance of commerce in, in, in Chicago, Illinois. A brother, that's what's up. I, I, you know, uh, we, we talked about this, Coach Watkins and I have been rocking for, you know, the last 10 days. And so a lot of these facts are coming out. And I, I we, we mentioned a little bit last night, I don't know, I didn't know a lot of these things. And, and when, you, when you put it out there and you think about all of these things that so many of our, our ancestors have done um, to pave the way, man, it, it just makes me feel a little warm, right? Like it makes you feel good, you know? Absolutely. All right, here we go. Let, let's move on to a little bit of trivia real quick. Um, Coach, don't lose, man. You don't want, you don't want to give up that ring. I, I think folks might be mad at you if you had to give up your ring. So, you don't want to lose. All right, <laughs> first question. Which of the following was not invented by a black inventor? Okay? Two of them were. One of them was not. Cordless phone, the ice cream scoop, or the golf tee, which was not invented by a black inventor? Cordless phone. Okay. The cordless phone. Yeah. Both of I you think saying that's a trick phone? question because we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all both. <laughs> Y'all both right. Cordless phone. It says the uh, ice scoop, ice cream scoop, was invented by Alfred Cradle in 1897, and George Grant invented the golf tees in 1899. And we weren't even allowed on certain golf courses. That's why. Right. Somebody had to make the tees. You got to understand, like, put it in perspective. Who's making the tees? Right. And, and I'm going to tell you, if somebody, if somebody said, you know what? I keep I keep getting my fingers in the ice cream and it's too cold. So, you know what? I'm going to invent a tool. Yeah. Do it up. Who's doing the scoop? It's right. about, about yeah. hey, who's doing the, doing the work? Right. And, 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 and you know, and here's, let's, let's be clear. Um, we're, we've always been very, very creative people, right? Because we had very little so in order to get things done, you, you, you've got to be creative. And so it, it, that, th these, that's interesting. All right, next one. It says, Jack Johnson became the first African-American bo heavyweight boxing champion of the world in what year? Was I'm it a boxer eight? fan. I already know this one. Go ahead. You already know it? Well, put it down. Was it eight? I'm, I'm going to let. All right, Coach Watkins. Was it 18, 1908? Was it 1928 or 1948? Mm. 08, 28, or 48? 08. 08? Hey, All right. He right, too. He right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jack Johnson was the first African-American to become uh, heavyweight champion of the world, according to filmmaker Ken Burns. For more than 13 years, Jack Johnson was the most famous and most notorious African-American on Earth in 1908. <laughs> All right, here we go. Last question, and it's a tie right now. <laughs> it's for the tiebreaker. All right. This is a name that person. I'm going to start telling some facts. First person to, sh to say who, that name, who the person is, is the winner. All right, name the first name. Be the first to name this black actor. He starred in his first film in 1991. Denzel Washington. He co-wrote and starred in his own film in 1995. Ice Cube. <laughs> oh! <laughs> he got you, guys. Yeah, it's Ice Cube, yeah. 
is Cube <laughs> O'Shea Jackson. Born in look look at this look look you see, can y'all see this picture? I don't know if you guys can see this picture on no, this can't. screen. Maybe the people as you live guys can. Right, okay. The li- if if you guys on the live chat can see this picture of O'Shea Jackson, oh my god, it's a throwback. <laughs> it says uh, better known as Ice Cube. Oh, well, uh, wow, with the pink shirt on. Right, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It says his lyrics on NWA uh in, in 1988. Straight out of Compton contribute to gangster rap's widespread p- popularity. His solo albums in 1990 and 91 consist of political rap, and in 1991 and 95 he ended the film with Boys in the Hood and Friday. Gotcha. My man Q. Hey, great job, <laughs> Coach Mad. Uh, now, hey, I'm one and one against you, Mads. Now, one and one against you, Mads. <laughs> Look, <laughs> hold on. I got I got to tell this quick story just because I'm hopefully he's still on there. Ice Cube, every time I see him, I think of my brother Tony because that's who he looked like. It's Ice Cube. <laughs> so uh, if, if y'all don't know him, that's what he looked like. <laughs> you know what's funny? Like I was I was looking at the picture you just said on the chat, right? And I just saw somebody put, somebody said, ask Coach June, uh, what's he know about Muskogee, Oklahoma, right? And I'm gonna tell right. you, it's funny because I know a lot about Muskogee, Oklahoma. And I, living in the is what we call the gee, the, the okay, gee. Okay. So that's before I left uh, Oklahoma, I was living in Muskogee, going to uh, when I left when my mother left to go to D.C. So I know a lot about I know a lot about the gee. My great grandma would live on Ninth Street. Yeah, tell them to, who is that? It was a, let me look. <laughs> nah, John, John Warren. Tell John Warren he lived on 19th. 312, right, yeah. 14th Street was my address. I remember. It was a long time ago. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? <laughs> Man, that's awesome. Um, so, Coach, I wanted to, just you were talking about how you empower your, when you were in high school. So, I'm, 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 I would assume you're doing the same thing in college. I know you are. Can you talk a little bit about that, your, your philosophy and motivating and empowering uh, your, your, your college players? I think to get them to understand, uh, one, that you care. Uh, you care about something more than football, all right? I can get you to get a nine technique and run a TE, or I can get you to drop to the flat uh, underneath the face of one and, and pick the ball off and go 60 and, all right, that's great. Like, I, the, a lot of people can do that, right? A lot of people have the ability to, you know, teach a kid to play football, right? And I think that it's so much more to it than that when they call you coach, um, that it's the duty to understand um, the needs of the kids. And I think that the part of that is actually, like I said, they have to know that you actually care about something other than football, right? And and getting them to see outside of football, because some of them, you have your football junkies that don't care about, they, they're dialed in, but you're trying to get them, hey, this college experience is one that, uh, it's a short window of opportunity to really shape and mold who you want to be and where you want to go. And, and, you know, going, being able to go to some of these great universities, like, like the university of Massachusetts right now, where these kids have uh, a, a great opportunity in a high academic uh, environment to really touch and be a part of a lot of sharp minded young individuals, the next CEO of this, the next, you know, creator of that. And that's kind of what college, I think the collegiate experience is about is to really tap into yourself and find out who you are. Cause a lot of guys get on campus and they're blank slate slate, and they wanna, they're trying to find who they are. Um, And it's, it's, we're part of that process. We're part of that maturation process where we're saying, hey, I wanna pour into the, to you so that now that you at least have some fuel to go out and try to do the things that you want to do and accomplish in life, not just now, but for later on in life. And I think that uh, the very part of that is them having to, you know, know that, that you care. I mean, on the flip side of that, I I kind of lead with tough love in the sense that you, I like to be as honest as you can uh, without, you know, my wife says, I got to work on my attack, but I, you know, (laughs) <laughs> I, I want to be as honest as I can, but still have the opportunity to tell these guys the the ugly truth, right? And, and really give them, uh, you know, tools that they can use along the way. Uh, no different than you give them a tool on the football field to say, hey, you know, when, when he, he jabs his arm, I'm going to counter with the slap rip, the chop rip. All right, I'm going to... Flip my hips open, right, and dip my shoulder because now that he's he has a softer, you know, uh, 
target to hit, like whatever I'm teaching them to give him, hey, this is the tool for this situation. How about we give these youngins some tools for life? You know what I mean? So like I have the opportunity to do that as a collegiate coach because this is my time. So now you have to be understanding the 20 hour rule in NCAA, right? <laughs> you have to really be uh, deliberate and intentional about you, how you go about trying to raise their awareness outside of something in football. Uh, and, I, and I really think that's important, uh, you know, as you try to help these young men grow uh, in the whatever time that you're with them, whether it's, you know, the full, full four years or if they're there for the season or two. Hey, how can I impact and try to change this young, young man's life uh, to give him some tools that he can take with him uh, and, and move on outside of football? Gotcha. And, and, and I know we got some guys in the chat that really want to know, what, what's your favorite drill, Coach? And, and, and why is it your favorite? My absolute favorite, you know, I, I don't know if I have a favorite drill, right? But <laughs> what, what I what I like to do um, is functional drills in the sense of I hated, you know, and the, I, I guess as a player, I never wanted to be the type of coach. I mean, when I get to coach, I don't, I'm not going to do that or I don't want to be this. You know, you didn't want, you know, I didn't want my coach to, me to feel like my coach was, didn't care about nothing but football. I also wanted my coach to do things that didn't make that made sense. Like I hated doing a drill that didn't make sense or didn't translate into, you know, game like situations. So, from a specific drill uh, standpoint, I would say that let's just tell you like I, there's so many that I like. You know, from a, from a linebacker standpoint, like I'm a, I'm a big uh, interception guy, right? So. Uh, I want these guys to really be comfortable in space, which is a, a different, you know, a lot, a lot of times backers, even outside backers are good in short area spaces, you know, spaces where, you know, it's confined. Now, when you get into the open space back into where you have to play coverage, um, that, that to me is um, a, a, maybe it's a DB coming from top down, you know, as I moved along, but like, it's just, it's just a different space. And a lot of times they're not comfortable though. So like putting them in those uncomfortable situations where they really try to have to grow. Um, I think that uh, you always want to, to me, like the, what's the biggest thing you do as a defensive coach, right? As a defensive coach, you're going to tackle more. You should, ta you should tackle more than you do anything. So finding different ways to create tackling drills, uh, one that are, you know, don't, you're not beating each other up, but two are game like situations. Uh, so, or combining a block destruction drill with a tackling drill. So like we might, let's say you're hitting the one man left sled, you know, the left sled that, go, that goes in, it goes up. I really like that left sled. Well, while it's not as realistic, right? Cause you got this big square sled that only goes uh, back and will only go up if you, if you, if you shock it back first. Um, but what it does is it, you know, to me, it, may, it creates guys that want to be violent with their hands. You got to be violent with your your hands when you, you know, do, when you're doing block destruction, whether you're tearing off or you're you're stunning them and, and ripping off arm over. However, you're getting off this block, you got to be violent. That first punch has to be violent. So having a, a left sled, boom, you hit the, you, you attack the left sled, drive it, you, you tear it off or you shed the block. And then now you go into an angle tackle drill. Like I like things like that because one, you have to, it's, it's taking your eyes from transitioning to um, man to ball. All right, defeat the block first. Now I got to go find the ball. And I always tell guys, hey, you got one shot to find the angle, right? So I'm here. And once I find that angle, now I want to be able to close ground, you know, uh, call it shimmy or whatever you want to call it. We go back and forth about those turns, but like essentially you have a long stride area space that you're closing it down a short stride area, whether you're shimmying up, you're closing, you're shortening your stride, but now I'm getting in strike position and I want to make sure that my body's in a position to strike and hit and, and now shoot. And that's the, now that's, I'm pulling the trigger. I'm literally running through the ball carrier. Um, now, whether I'm doing that at a near low quarter or I'm doing that at a near high quarter or, you know, coming from an angle tackle, that just determines how much ground I've closed and what kind of tackle I can make or what type of tackler am I? You know, I'm from a smaller DB and some bigger back. Hey, I might want to go for the low quarter because my whole job is to get this guy on the ground, right? And we miss so many tackles trying to get a big hit or trying to, uh, you're overextended as opposed to closing the ground, 
you know, and, and, I, and I talk like it's simple, like these backs aren't just awesome, right? But <laughs> you want to close the ground between you and the ball carry, right? You want to get in a hip position. How do you get in a hip position? By uh, shortening your stride. And now I'm getting, and when I have great posture, I can strike. And I think that when you combine that, like I said, I use the left sled, for example, I have to attack the left sled. No one likes to do the left sled, right? Because it's heavy. It's, it, it, you, if you don't, if you're not hitting it at the right angle, it won't go up, you know, and, and it's it's got some weight to it. And you got to be violent with your hands, right? So now you got to callous your hands uh, on this left sled, right? Getting off the block. But to me, it's it's a realistic situation that you become in. Engaging a blocker, getting off the blocker. I have a moving target that I have to close on and I have to create the, uh, take the right angle to get there. So when you talk about drills, I think tackling drills that are that encompass you know some other uh form of either block destruction uh or or drop i think is is good because a lot of the game is played in space right and you have to do drills uh as a skill position guy that force these guys who typically aren't in space like that to be comfortable out in space one and be disciplined with their eyes and be you know getting their body into a great uh football position and your hip position so uh those are the things from you know if i had to say hey what's just what's your favorite drill like you know ones that kind of at the same time they, they're not a dumb drill but they piss a, a piss the kid off drill because they don't like to do it because it's not easy right and if they know they don't do it they're gonna get embarrassed and everybody's waiting in line like all right, here we go, Charlie. Yeah, come on, Charlie. And everybody trying to be positive, right? Because coach is getting a quote in the morning. Out. Come on, Charlie. This is all right, man. Next guy. You know, they, they finally get frustrated. They're like, all right, watch out, man. We, we trying to keep right. it. Right. We We've all been there. there. That's what's up. Hey, Coach, uh, before we let you go, we got a couple more uh, questions from the chat line. I'm, I'm going to ask those couple questions, then we'll get you out of here. Man, I appreciate you. you you've been awesome tonight um, sharing with us the things that you've shared and, and your story. It, it, it is, uh, you know, again, I've been excited just to hear some of what you've been through, right? I mean, again, you don't, it is not every day you get to talk to a Super Bowl champion. <laughs> so uh, from, from the chat line real quick, Coach, um, let's see what we got. Coach Allball asks, uh, "What's the, oh? Are you able to say what's the uh, logo on your zip up? Is that is that something? Yeah, that's exclusive? yeah. So, no, nah, it's not. Well, I mean, it's exclusive <laughs> to it, it should, everybody should get one. So it's like um, this logo, a buddy of mine, uh, actually another one of my buddies from Oklahoma, who we could reconnected in DC, um, uh, created a, a Christian clothing line." Uh, was called Armor and Glory, you know, and put on God, uh, God's armor, receiver's glory. It's kind of like the message. And, I, and I always, when he, when, he, when he started out, I was like, man, that's super dope, right? You know, you're literally putting on the shield of armor of God. Like, that's the, the idea when you're putting on the clothing. And, you know, and, you know, we all day, we go to the store and just buy whatever. So I just said, you know, I got to be delivered. And I got a couple guys that um, that are doing, like, I have another one of my, one of my closest friends has a, a uh, hold on, Coach. Hold. On. I hate to I hate to cut you <laughs> off. Uh, you mind dropping the, some some uh, co some contact on this on this uh, God's armor? Oh, a a absolutely. I um I guess I had to. Uh, I'll text it to you so you can post okay. it. But no, just put. Can you, you know it? Oh. Can you just say it? Oh, uh, we live. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. Ar armor and glory. Armor and glory. Right. Dot com, I think it's the uh, A and G Sports dot com or something like that. I, you know, you know, everything is is memorized in your right. <laughs> in your thing, right? So, but but it's, it's armor and glory is yep. what it's called. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That, I like I like that. Yeah. So so go on. I'm yeah, sorry, coach. So, I hate to cut you off. And then like uh, one of my closest friends uh, who lives in Indiana, um, one of the three guys, uh, my man Jay Chapman Anacasi is an A team guy. Got always shout out my A team guy, right? So. <laughs> He has uh, a company that called Faithfully Fitted. All right? And if you go, I think on uh, Facebook, if you go to Faithfully Fitted, like you can get all type of, you know, Christian uh, gear, hats, you know, stuff like that. You know, and, and like I said, anytime you're putting on some a positive message, you know, being intentional, I, I think with what you do and what you wear um, is, is awesome. My other buddy, that my cousin, he's he has uh, a company called go be great on purpose right so if you go to go be great on purpose you'll see me see me sometime tweet it out like and, and i think there's some little things like that are just kind of positive so you know just putting on a shirt oh you say go be great on purpose and then you, you're like ah that's awesome and, and just seeing from the where where it started because he was teaching 
middle school kids and trying to find ways to get these kids motivated about school. And so he had this whole little song. I, I don't and some, you know, something like go to the schoolhouse, know the worth it, go be great on purpose. Like all these kids, and you see the excitement and they did it every day, like an affirmation. I'm like, man, that's dope. I got I can be behind that. Like, so right. like to me, like when you know you put on whatever you want to wear, but I'm like, if I can be intentional about you know, supporting my guys, guys that are my friends, not only just people that all oh, this is my mind, I know them. No, these are my friends, like uh standing in each other's weddings type of deal, like friendship. Like to me, like you have to be intentional on on doing these things and supporting, you know, your own people. Uh, wow. <laughs> Coach, I, I give me a second. Let me collect myself. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I thought you was, I thought that was about to be some little sports some uh, uh, from from uh, some little gym that you that you you know frequent sometime that 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 to hear those kind of stories are awesome just because just like you're saying i mean we're wearing all kind of we're wearing uh logos every day of of people that we don't know or of of messages that aren't that <laughs> they they aren't mess messages that are go be you know be great on purpose right these are things that Kids need to hear and see, and, and so I'm glad that question came. I, we, it, 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 it took us to the end, but <laughs> I'm glad that question came because it gave you the opportunity to share that. And 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 listen, Coach, I I don't know how many how often you are doing interviews and all of that, but when you're wearing that, start with that. <laughs> start, start with that. That that that's awesome. That, that that's awesome to hear, my man. Absolutely, absolutely. Being intentional, man. Trying to be intentional. Being intentional. So listen, Coach, I appreciate you, man. I, we, we appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. It has been great to get to know you a little bit. Um, do, do this for me. If you've got some contact information you don't mind sharing on the chat line so that if, if folks want to reach out to you a little bit, again, I, I think one of the greatest things about our show, the greatest things about this platform is it allows other coaches that, 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 are, that are intentional <laughs> about learning, about, um, about sharpening their tool um, it allows us to chat a little bit, and so if you don't mind, if you would drop a little contact that folks would, be, you know, can reach out to you if, you, if they're if they're able. Absolutely, I put my uh, my email here. You know, we're easy to reach nowadays, man. You know, these people yeah. are like, ah, hey, you, you know, I'm like, ah, hey, you're on Twitter. I can talk to you, DM. That's the same thing, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Listen, that's funny because I I told you I, now you you wanted the 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 uh, more mature. <laughs> respect, listen, respect. Cause, cause you, listen, you 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 still younger than me, so I can't say old, right? So you're you're one of the more mature coaches we've had, and, and so um, I, I'm not a, a ashamed to tell you, like I'm just learning all this Twitter and all of this stuff, like I until I was the head coach for real. Until I was the head coach, it wasn't that important to me to reach out to people using that platform. And so here's another opportunity to reach out to folks. So Absolutely. again, coach, again, man, I appreciate you, dog. Um, I, I feel like I feel like we cousins now. So <laughs> basically, if, if, we basically right. are. Let, let, anytime if, you say you go, you go blue over there. Psh, oh, we good. We good forever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, and I had a, coach, I still had a great time, man. Um, I love to link up off air too. You know, your drills are amazing. That's something I think I preach you know, as being a DC here, is how can we do drills that translate to the game, right? Not doing all these cone drills and doing all this footwork that doesn't translate. I want to know how, can you get off a block? Can you pursue and can you properly tackle? So absolutely good to hear that, uh, especially from a guy like yourself. Uh, that artwork behind you, man, that thing looks amazing too. I've been wanting to tell you that in the beginning, <laughs> dude. So you probably- I can't take that. credit. I can't take credit. Yeah, you know, this is all the wife now. Right. <laughs> 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 right, right. Well, listen, Coach, we're going to let you out of here, man. I, I appreciate you hanging out with us. If you have the opportunity, we're on again tomorrow night and Friday night doing about 8 o'clock, so I think it's 9 o'clock your time. If you're able to, jump on the chat line, hang out a little bit, even if you had five minutes, right? Hang out a little bit. Um, let, let, guys know, let guys know you're around. Absolutely. I'll definitely come through. I appreciate you guys having me, man. It was a joy. Uh, look forward to keep connecting, man. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Take care, coach. It's a pleasure, my All man. Right. Coach, <laughs> listen, if if you keep if we keep having these kind of shows, <laughs> there's no wrap-up to do. Right? I, I mean, like, 
what's, what, what do you say to that? How, how, do, how do I cap that off? Right. It's just good to see that, you know, that African-American coach in his position, using his platform uh, for the betterment of his players and to learn out that he's a brother of Christ too. I was, you know, blown away. Um, just, I'm glad everyone got to see, you know, what type of coaches are out there. And I thought yeah. you know, that was awesome. Yeah. And, 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 and coach didn't come here and uh, sugarcoat anything. <laughs> he dropped some knowledge on us and rolled out so i'm that i'm charged up that, that, was, that was awesome so coach listen um you get out of here man you get some rest i know you got an early morning um you get some rest and, and i'll see you tomorrow god willing all right willing. see you tomorrow yes sir yes sir yep. fellas those of you on the chat line that's been rocking with us we really appreciate you um, we are out of here for the night, but before I get out of here, I got to shout out our sponsors one more time. Um, uh, QB school has been great to us this, this, uh, season. Um, QB school, the home of the best football analysis on YouTube, 8 million viewers and a hundred thousand subscribers has watched as JT O'Sullivan, former NFL QB with a PhD breakdown football. In addition, the new QB school entitled master pass protection, a QB lens is available right now. All the links are down there. Production said they got things right, so it's down there. Um, also, check us out on Chief Pigskin. Uh, listen, stuff in the clinic, stuff at the store. Clinic. Chief Pigskin. I'm sorry. Clinic.chiefpigskin.com or the store. Store.chiefpigskin.com. Appreciate you guys joining us. 